Now, it's a year to the day that Myanmar rolled out a new company's law to attract more foreign direct investment, or otherwise known as FDI, into the country. The new law, which replaces rules made more than a century ago, is one of several initiatives to reform the economy. These are slowly bearing fruit, but while the economy has picked up pace, experts are cautioning that Myanmar's FDI targets this year may still fall short. CNA's Young Wai Kid with this report. Ladies and gentlemen, since this government came into office, Myanmar has been actively pursuing a range of FDI liberalization measures. In recent We're years, open for business. Myanmar's message to the world, an appeal to investors to do business here. This is one of many forums held to persuade businessmen around the world of the country's investment opportunities. And to prove it's sincere, Myanmar has done its part. In August last year, it rolled out a new company's law, allowing foreigners to own up to 35% of local companies. It's a big boost, experts say, to local firms who want to expand but don't have the means to. Myanmar has also taken other steps to reform economic policies. For instance, in November 2018, it formed the new Ministry of Investment and Foreign Economic Relations. It aims to give investors swifter information and to even manage disputes among investors. In March, Myanmar saw the first positive sign that its effort was reaping rewards. Data from the country's investment authority showed foreign direct investment, or FDI, rose for the first time in two years. Observers say State Councillor Aung San Suu Kyi, the country's de facto leader, has not done much for the economy until only recently and that government officials need to step up. The problem though that we have is a real lack of capacity and a lack of coordination amongst ministries and this is something that constantly businesses and we talk to them all the time both Myanmar and foreign say that it's the red tape, it's the unnecessary regulations and it's the lack of a risk based approach by government officials that is a major problem for them that just leads to decisions not being made because nobody wants to make them. Political volatility and lack of infrastructure support are other issues potential investors don't want to have to deal with. I think the, the key thing for an investor is to have predictability on long-term energy supply and prices. And uh, Myanmar is facing the ch same challenges as many other developing countries. And as a consequence, people are either choosing other places or they're delaying their investment decision. One of the key factors is political stability. Uh, the other factors is uh, appropriate uh, infrastructure like electricity, roads uh, and other related infrastructure. And uh, thirdly, the correct and uh, available uh, human resources. Accusations of humanitarian violations and terrorism concerns are also deterring investments. The Rohingya crisis um, and other conflicts, including now the Arakan army conflict. So all of these are still making investors be a little bit cautious. The fact that we have elections coming up in 2020 again, it's become a, well, should we wait and see until after that? But there are some areas for investors to be happy about. From a health perspective, um, the country has achieved dramatic success in reducing uh, deaths and disease from malaria, for instance, during the last five years, which is, I think, a big plus for investors. Myanmar is aiming for its FDI to hit 5.8 billion US dollars this fiscal year. Experts say that at the current pace, it's unlikely this target will be met. But many are hopeful next year will be better. And industry watchers, like Ms. Bowman, says that despite all its challenges, investors haven't given up on this country. Leong Wekit, CNA, Myanmar.